You've just spent a bunch of time making the arm. The last thing you want to do is repeat all of that hard work for the other side. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to not only duplicate parts of the rig, but also have it so that when you do draw new substitutions, such as different hands, then it will automatically make those new drawing substitutions for the other side. Let's begin! So we've got our finished character here, apart from the things that need to be duplicated. In this tutorial, I'm going to be duplicating the eye and the arm. Now, if you do want to learn how to make this character or a character of your own, I've got a full beginner's course that teaches you how to make your own cartoon from start to finish with Toon Boom Harmony, and I'll leave that link in the description below. So let's head over to the eye. So here we've got our eye near, and I want to duplicate this and put it to the other side and it will become the eye far. Now, if you have a look at the beginning of these names, I've put an N there and that is an N for near. And then the other one that will be replaced with an F, which is for far. Now you might think, oh, if it's a 360 turnaround, surely that near eye will then become a far eye. But it won't because we don't do angles for the entire 360. We do it for half of the angles and then we use a flip peg to flip it for the other angles. So that near eye will always be nearer us in the camera view. And it's really straightforward to do. So all you have to do is select the eye, go over to this menu in the top left here, go on nodes, and then you want to clone selected nodes drawings only. So what that means is we are duplicating the arm, but the drawing nodes are getting cloned, but the timing isn't getting cloned. So if we were to clone the drawings and the timing, both of those arms would move together. So if you moved one armor or one eye, the other eye would also move, and that's because you've cloned the timing as well. In this case, we only want to clone the drawings only because say we're doing multiple blink shapes and we add a new eye in there, you want that drawing to appear onto the other one. So we're going to clone select nodes drawings only. So that's been duplicated and the drawings have been cloned. So we've got that there. However, it's not appearing because we need to reattach everything. So we've got our eyes and brows here. So we need to attach that to our eye master. And we're going to plug this eye comp into that cutter. This will go down to our handles. And I believe that's all connected up now. So if we do select this eye master, it is appearing, but it's in the exact same place, which isn't what we want. So I'm going to move it over to the other side. However, when I do move it over to the other side, we want the default position to be over here. So what I mean by that is if I take this eye and I move it up here and then I press R while I'm hovered over the camera view, it will reset back to that position because that's where we made it at. That is the zero axis for this eye. Not only do we want it to be over here, but we want it to be flipped as well. So we do that with the static transformation. First of all though, I am gonna change the naming conventions for these because we wanna change that N to an F. And we also wanna get rid of that underscore one there. So I'm gonna come into this backdrop by pressing the yellow square and first of all I'm just going to change it to a brown color um, I will also change it to I far and I'm just going to select all the nodes we want to change the names of so typically I like to line up all of the drawing nodes so they are easily selectable so I can just do this and I'll select the comps as well um, and then I want to come over to this button up here add prefix suffix so if you don't have these buttons in your node view just right click and then just click node view there so we're going to click that and the first thing we want to do is change that n so it's a prefix because it's at the beginning of the name and we're going to type in f underscore so that's going to be inserted and then we're taking away n underscore and now you can see that N has changed to an F. And then the second thing we want to do, and this is a suffix because it's at the end, we just want to remove the underscore one. We don't want to insert or replace it with anything, so we're just removing it. 
So now the naming conventions are F underscore and you don't have that underscore one anymore. Um, I just realized I need to plug this eyebrow to there as well. Just ma basically matching that up. Now we want to use the static transformation. So the best way that I found to use a static transformation, and again, that is telling Toon Boom that it's going to have a new default position, which is going to be over here, so that when you do press that R key to reset it, it will go back here and not back to there. So the way I use static transformations, and this is something I picked up from the last studio that I worked at, is a little bit different to the official way Toon Boom tells us to use it, as far as I've seen. So I'm going to make a temporary peg by pressing Ctrl P, and I'm going to place it above this eye master here. The second thing I'm going to do is make sure that these share the pivots. So you can do that by either coming into this yellow square and copying this pivot location information and pasting it into this new one. Or a slightly quicker way is if you right click this and then come down to scripting if you don't have it already. And then this will make these two buttons appear. And then you just want to click manage scripts and type in copy. And this is the one you want, copy, paste, pivots. So this is a script that is built into Toon Boom. You just need to make it appear in the toolbar. Um, and then you have these two, which will appear as buttons. So I've already got it, but if you don't, you just want to click each one of these and then click the arrow to bring it into the toolbar. And then you'll want to do the same for this one. And then you can press OK. And you can also change the graphics of these if you want. And the way it works is you click the peg that you want to copy the pivot information from. And then we click copy. And then we go to the new peg and we click paste. So now these two have the same location for their pivots. Um, this is a temporary peg, so we will be deleting it. The next thing we want to do is bring in our static transformation. I'm going to put that in there. And I'm just going to call this um, F-I-S-T for static transformation. When it comes to naming conventions, I'll probably do a brand new video on naming conventions, but we always want to make it as short as we can just to save space. And now on this new peg, we're going to reposition our I over there. So to do that, we'll come into the Tool Properties tab here. And first of all, we need to flip it. And then we're just going to place it where we think our eye is. And that looks about right on the other side. We can also use our mirror button to see that. So once we've done that, we simply come into here, make immediate parent transformation. You'll notice it's gone over to the other side, but not to worry because as soon as we delete this peg, then the eye is now over here and we don't have to relocate that pivot. So if I move this and press R, it's been reset here. So I'm just gonna show you one more time and this time we will do it for the arm. So again, take the arm. We're highlighting all of the arm by clicking the backdrop, come into this menu here, nodes, clone selected nodes, drawings only. We will then plug in our arm to the arm's composite. We will plug the arms both into the arm master. I'm going to change this to arm far and we'll change it to another green color. Change the naming conventions. So prefix, insert F, remove N, remove underscore one create a new temporary peg for this arm master, copy the pivot, paste it to the new temporary one, use this peg to relocate that arm. Zoom in a little bit and just make sure that is perfectly lined up like that. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Take our static transformation, bake immediate parents transformation and remove that peg. We can rename this. And we've successfully duplicated our arm. So if we go over to this hand, you can see that we've got eight drawing substitutions. And if I go to this hand, we've got eight drawing substitutions there as well. However, let's say we're animating, we need a new bespoke hand for a particular pose. So I am going to press Control Shift D to duplicate this hand shape. 
I'll come into the drawing tab so it's a little bit easier. Um, so what I like to do is I just like to duplicate it so that we can reuse this part of the hand and then carry on from there. Now I'm not going to do a nicely drawn hand because this is just for an example sake. So let's just do a sword hand or a saw hand. So because we have cloned those drawings, if we come over to the other hand now, that drawing has appeared into our drawing substitutions. We still need to um, plug this arm into the relevant nodes to auto patch this. So if we look for our torso line, it will be this composite that we need to plug it into. So we've got this here, which is two torso line art cutter, and we can plug that into there. And then we also need to do that for the torso to the arm as well. So we've got our torso auto patch here. And that will be, if we compare it with the arm near, that will be plugged into the line art, which is this. And also the overlay, which is this. And also the overlay. And that's how you easily duplicate parts of your rig. So just to summarize, select the entire section of the rig that you want to duplicate. Come over to this menu, nodes, drawings only. Bring it into position in the node view. Do your naming conventions with this prefix suffix button. Plug everything back into their relevant nodes. Flip and reposition. Add in your static transformer. And that is how you duplicate parts of the rig. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.